Yes, sir. Yeah. So as you know, discovery of electrons, as well, that is only called as uh, cathode rays. So it has been discovered by Mr. Uh, sir Joseph John Thompson. That is what uh, we used to call it as J.J. Thompson. So he is the one who has been uh, discovered these electrons in 1897 by the study of uh, cathode rays in his uh, discharge tube experiment. So in last class, very in detail, I explained you what is this discharge tube and uh, how it will be and what is the ways we are connecting this discharge tube. This all the things uh, I explained. So if you take this discharge tube, which will be having a cylindrical glass tube, about how much long it is, everybody? Around 60, 60 centimeter long, and it can pass through the electricity, through the gases at very low pressure or high pressure. Everyone? Low pressure. Low pressure. Low pressure. So, and as we know, before uh, this J.J. Thompson, in 1890, 1897, Sorry, 1879. See, when J.J. Thompson has been done, 1897. But before J.J. Thompson, 1879 itself, Mr. Uh, a, a British scientist named William Crookes has been passed. Actually, like uh, ordinary poor connectors of electricity, even uh, if has been, uh, he has been connected 10,000 volts, uh, he applied through the gases, he has been found that gases are poor connectors are good connectors at normal pressure. They are the poor conductors. Poor conductor. When when he started conducting electricity by decreasing the pressure, like uh, pressure inside the discharge tube reduces gradually, so that they will turn into what? They will turn into good conductors. Yes or no? Yes, please. So that is what uh, we have been. Sure. So, the same thing we have been noticed. Next, we have seen the discharge tube components, what is present. So, the, it is a glass tube which is having both ends are sealed or open. Yes, please. Both ends are sealed. Is it correct? All of you. Good morning, Abrami. So, as we have all seen, this is what uh, I have taught you. What is discharge tube? So it is having both ends are uh, sealed and as well as it is having a, a metal plates as electrodes. So as well uh, seen that one is called as positive end. Positive end connected one why is to called as what guys? Positive end is to called as what we used to say? Anode. Yeah, anode. And as anode. negative one is to called as cathode. So that is what we have seen. So and we have down a external connecting. That is what extra discharge tube. That is what vacuum pump we used to say. So what is the use of vacuum pump, everyone? Yes, it will create low pressure. It creates the low pressure so that gases will turn into good conductor good conductor. conductors. That is what you have to notice it. Understand everybody? So now let us understand how this Mr. J.J. Thompson has been conducted this experiment and what are the ways uh, we need to analyze these properties of cathode rays. So you might understand cathode rays means, what do you mean by cathode rays? Electrons or protons? Yes, please. We will say the electrons. Okay. So please all of you keep waiting. Now we will see how it has been happened and everything. So please all of you make experiment conducted by JJ Thompson. See why we need to study the scientist names and as well as their faces because last uh, last week when we went for uh, sorry this week when we attended the quiz science quiz you asked Mr. Harish or Omar or uh, some people. You might understand the importance of uh, scientist names and uh, scientist uh, faces. Is it Mr. Sanjay Ganan? Harish? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, around three or four scientists uh, 
uh, names they have been asked uh, in the quiz, teachers' quiz uh, also. So, of course, it's not that compulsory to know, but every time we need to know the scientists' uh, names and their faces at least. So, surely it will be helpful. Okay. Good morning, Mitakshri. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Yeah, no issues, no issues. Now, so let us understand. So, J.J. Thompson connected the electrodes of discharge to, to a source of high voltage. So, if you have taken around, what is the voltage he has been taken? Around 10,000 volts uh, potential difference. So, that much uh, he has been connected. It's extremely dangerous even. We people, uh, like our household current is just 220 volts. So, it is 10,000 volts. So, what he has been done means... Mr. J.J. Thompson connected these uh, electrodes. So we have two electrodes. What is the two electrodes, guys? One is positive electrode. Another one is negative. That is what? Anode and? Cathode. Uh, yeah. Cathode. This discharge to, to a source of very, very high voltage. Then uh, an induction coil or any other source of high voltage was used for this purpose. So, uh, it's basically we cannot uh, create with the household current and all. This much. Clear? So, we people cannot create. Please mute your. Omar, Omar, concentrate on work. Okay? So, observe all of you. With our household current, we people cannot create uh, this much uh, high potential difference between the electrodes. So, that is why he has been used. Uh, you can choose either induction coil, okay? So, which will increase the potential difference or we can use any other sources of high voltage, uh, high voltage uh, for this purpose to creating 10,000 watts. So, this discharge tube, it is attached to the vacuum, vacuum pump. So, what is the use, guys? What is the use of vacuum pump? Again, I have told you. Yes, please. It will create the low pressure. Yeah, it will create the air pressure. It will reduce the inside. So, the tube was filled with air or some of the gases. So, if I have taken normally, let me take a discharge tube. So, what will happen? We all know that the tube which is present. So, it will be filled with the either air or any kind of gases. You can take any gas or you can take uh, normal air. So, basically, we know that air is a mixture of gases or you can take a particular gas. So, if I create the, if I connect it to the vacuum pump so that the pressure inside this tube will be decreases. It may be air or maybe a particular gas. So, that uh, what will happen? The 10,000 watt potential difference was applied, taking the pressure, it just, if you have taken, what is the normal atmospheric pressure? Anybody knows here? Normal atmospheric pressure. I want to know response from you. Yes, please. What is the normal pressure? All of you. What is the boiling point of water? See, class 9 student don't know what is the normal atmospheric pressure. Then uh, it is really it's very bad. Mr. Harish, Gokul? Nobody? I think someone having a disturbance. Please, Michael. So, normal pressure, all of you remember, basically we'll say, what is the boiling point of water? Everybody, can you tell me? Boiling point of water. Please. Can you hear me? Please respond. At least say right or wrong secondary. 100 degrees Celsius. Actually, 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. So, but if you if either a class 6th boy or 7th boy will say this answer, this answer will be accepted. But as you are now almost promoted to class 10, if you will say still this answer and as you are a science student, this is a wrong answer. So, of course, remember, if you want to def define any physical quantity in this nature, minimum two parameters we need to know. With one parameter, we cannot decide any physical quantity. Keep in mind that minimum two parameters we know. One is, of course, if you want to say the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, of course, temperature is the one parameter. Second parameter is pressure. At what pressure? 
because at 1 atm so one atmospheric pressure only water boiling point is 100 degrees celsius do you understand everybody so normal pressure our atmospheric pressure you might be studied in class 8th barometer and all do you remember that mercury meter barometer and all everyone yes please yes so this is what we used to call it as barometer which will use to measure the atmospheric pressure so normal atmospheric pressure is 1 atm understand r which is equals to 760 mm hg rise in mercury do you remember that everyone everyone I mean 760 mm hg mm means millimeter rise in hg what do you mean by hg guys anyone hg means what mercury so that is what it is so if i place the mercury mercury container this is what barometer at normal sea level so the mercury will rise to up to 76 centimeter or 760 millimeter so that is what atmospheric pressure we can say at least will you remember now so now what is the boiling point of water everyone what is the boiling point of water Please. 100 degrees Celsius degree. at what pressure at 1 atm understanding one atmospheric pressure that is what you have to remember it clear same way mr jj thompson conducted his experiment at at what conditions so the tube which is filled with air or some other gases whatever the thing and 1000 10000 degree potential 10000 volts 10000 volt potential difference was applied on it taking the normal pressure what is the normal pressure 760 760 how much guys mm hg okay millimeter okay everybody but if you notice it being poor conductor of uh, electricity who the air which is present inside the discharge tube or it is a uh, gas which is present no current is observed when when i kept the normal pressure all of you remember that when he applied this 10,000 watt 10,000 volts potential difference at normal pressure no electricity is flowing through that why because what is the reason guys because air is a what yes please air is a what bad conductor bad conductor it's a very very poor conductor or bad conductor of electricity so a uh, being a poor conductor of electricity no current flowing through this air when even a extremely high voltage 10000 volts was applied to it so air pressure reduced to 1 mm of hg do you understand all of you from where to where we have reduced it, mr harish from 760 mm of hg to we have to reduce to how much amount 1 mm of hg so extremely small or not please respond all of you Yes? Yes, yes. So, he reduced the pressure from 760 mm to 1 mm of hg so with the help of whom it is possible with the help of whom guys omar with the help of vacuum yeah. pump so then the electricity started flowing so as a result the tube started glowing that is what we can notice we can notice in this picture all of you observe. So before, even though 10,000 watts is uh, conducting, no kind of current is passing through that. As soon as the pressure, the pressure is reduced to 1 mm hg, you can see that the, the tube is started glowing. Have you noticed it, everybody? Yes, please. All of you. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. if you see that, even further, if I reduce the pressure, he started reducing the pressure from 1 mm hg to even 0.001 mm of hg what do you mean by mm of hg all of you should say millimeter rise in 
Please respond. Mercury. 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 Okay. HG means Mercury. Please remember. Okay. Then the walls opposite to the cathode started glowing with a, a faint greenish one. So this is what cathode and this is what anode. So faint greenish one. That is what light we used to call it as fluorescence. Okay. F L U O, sorry, F L U O R E S C E N C, fluorescence. F L U O R E S C E N C, fluorescence, we used to say. So, this is once the pressure is reduced to the 0 0.01 mm of Hg, he has been noticed that. At the cathode. So cathode means here only. Is it yes or no, guys? Cathode means negative or positive? Everybody. Cathode. Negative. Understand? So here it has been noticed a faint, faint means a light color. A faint green color, greenish light is observed. That is what we used to say. Fluorescence. So why it is happening? Because due to the invisible rays on the walls of the tubes, that invisible rays only we used to. What is that race called as? Yes, cathode rays. Yeah. So due to the collision of invisible rays on the walls of the tube, that, that the invisible rays only is to called as cathode rays. So this is how Mr. J.J. Uh, uh, Thompson conducted this experiment. And let us uh, draw this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, things very clearly so that you will understand. Now see that because of collisions of this cathode rays, we are seeing the greenish color one at this side. Have you noticed it, everybody? Yes, please respond all of you. Yes or no? Yes, please. That is what we used to say. So as this wall opposite to the cathode rays, actually here the cathode rays. We can see that opposite to the cathode, who is with there, guys? Opposite to the cathode. Anode. 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 So, anode, what is the color we are seeing? Faint. Faint. Green. Green. Clear? Green. So that is what we have to see. So what is the reason it's happening? The wall opposite to the cathode will be started glowing to the faint green color. Because of whom? Because of collision of invisible rays on the wall of the tube. So what is the trace we used to call it as? Cathode trace. Cathode trace. That is what it is. Now, let us draw for our, uh, our purpose, for our understanding. We will draw this diagram, cathode trace experiment, and later we will study properties of this cathode trace. Okay? So now, I hope you all understand. Everybody clear, guys? Please respond. Now, if you have taken your discharge tube, all of you, just for uh, fastly, I will draw. So, let us consider one discharge tube. Omar, understand, Omar? Okay, so this is the discharge tube. So, now here I am creating a vacuum pump. vacuum pump. So here I am connecting to the negative node of battery. So negative node means what is that guys? Cathode or anode? Everybody? Cathode. Cathode. Remember that again somebody is saying anode. So it's a negative node of battery. So that is what we used to call it as? What we used to call it guys? Cathode. Okay. Negative charge. So now on this side we will be having one more thing. Who is that? Yes, please. That is called as anode. 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 This is a positive charge. Okay. Now, you can see whenever we created, actually, this is the source of high voltage. Source of high voltage. So, either we can take high source of high voltage or to increase the voltage, we can use what, guys? I told you to use something. What is it called as? Harish? Induction coil. Okay. So induction coil will increase the voltages. Now, 
This is the side tube. Side tube means we all know what is the use of side tube? Side tube is connected to home. Vacuum. So it will create the low thing. So now, if you all notice it, whenever we create, we reduce the pressure from normal 760 mm of Hg to 0.001 mm of Hg, extremely low pressure, so that gas will turn into extremely good conductor. So from opposite walls of the cathode, who will be present? Opposite walls of the cathode. Yes, please. Opposite walls of the cathode is present. And so the walls of the anode, you can see the invisible light rays are passing. So due to this collision of invisible rays on the walls of this tube, so that we are seeing that the wall, the opposite walls of the cathode is appears to be what color? Yes, please. Is appears to be what color? Faint. Faint. Okay. So that is what it will be happening. So please make it everything clearly. Anything doubt anyone can ask. So this is what is appears to be. So this is what the experiment conducted by Mr. J.J. Thompson to prove that that is as they are discharging from the cathode. So he has been called them as cathode rays as they are discharging from the cathode, cathode rays and they are what charge? Actually, Negative charge. Negative charge. That is why they are called as what we used to call Mr. Noor. They are called as the electron. Okay. Electrons. Anything doubt you can ask me. Mr. Akilan, clear. Kaushik, call to Arun Arun Galas. Arun Galas, Nimish, one by one. Nimish is there. Okay. Yohan and Harini. Clear, ma. Understand or not? Everybody. Yes, please. All of you? Yes. Yeah. Anybody having anything doubt, you can ask me. So now, actually, cathode rays having uh, so many properties, so, but uh, for you, very few is needed. That few alone, I will say you because you, I want, I can say that doesn't matter. So, but uh, uh, like uh, you'll, you'll uh, find so many terminologies leads to confusion for you at this stage. Okay. So now let us uh, make properties of cathode rays which are necessary for us. We'll study now. So please, all of you, keep adding properties of cathode rays. So let's start. Yes. Yeah. See, nobody will spend much, this much time even in class 11th on this experiment. So, but why? Basics would be very strong so that only we are studying. So, then only you will get ideas to think over the projects and all. So, learn anything doubt you can ask me. So, first point. First point. So, where they are started coming everybody? They are coming from where? They are actually discharging from where? Cathode. Correct or not? So that is why we will say cathode rays are negatively charged. Cathode rays are negatively charged. So that is the first property of uh, cathode rays. So let us uh, study what is this uh, property. So as we all know, when cathode rays are passed through strong electric field, if you have noticed it, they are deflecting towards to the positive charge terminal. That is what he has been noticed. So always, as we know, in class 8, we are studying who will be who will be attracting positive and positive will show attraction or repulsion. Everybody. Yes, please. Repulsion. Repulsion. Yes, please. So, like charges always will show repulsion or attraction. Sruti, like charges. So, like charges will show repulsion and unlike charges will show what? Yes, please. Attraction. So, when we have passed through this cathode rays through a strong electric field, they are deflecting towards the positive terminal. So, means in the sense of Cathode rays consist of negative charge and positive charge. Yes, please. Negative charge. negative charge. That is how he has been discovered the electrons. Are you clear, everybody? 
Yes, please. So cathode rays are negatively charged. How we can say? When cathode rays, please write. When cathode rays, Nimesh, understanding Nimesh, Akilan rays are passing through, passing through strong electric beam, strong electric field. Strong electric field, they are deflecting, they are deflected towards to whom, guys? Positively or negative? Towards positively charged terminal. Abraham, you understanding? Terminal. So, you can say that they consist of negatively charged particles or positively charged particles. It shows that they consist of negatively charged particles. Clear, everybody? Okay, learn. Toshik. That is what it is. Okay. Now, always if you notice it in the experiment, I have shown you cathode rays. Is they are going alternative ways or they are going in a straight line? Anybody? Have you noticed it? Yes, please. Have observed the cathode rays are passing. In a, they are going in a straight line. Going in that opposite. Anybody? They are going in a straight line. That is the second property. All of you remember. Cathode rays travel. Cathode rays travel in a straight line. Okay. So how it is now? Let us discuss this cathode ray can cast a shadow of opaque object on the wall opposite to the cathode. So if you'll notice it, uh, cathode rays travel in a straight line similar to the normal rays. So what do you mean by that? I will explain it, observe. So when I have taken a discharge tube, observe how I can say uh, it is a, a, they are traveling in a straight line. So, as we know, this is called as uh, negative terminal. What is this called as, guys? High voltage if I connected. What is this called as? All of you? Cathode. Is it yes or no? Yes, please. All of you? Yes. If, if I keep any kind of opaque object on its way, let me take, uh, this is what my opaque object. So, I have kept on its way. Now, I have noticed it. The shadow is forming on the opposite to the cathode. Cathode. So who is the opposite to the cathode? Everybody? Anode. 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 So we have it has been noticed that the shadow of the the shadow of this opaque object is exactly forming on the opposite to the cathode tube. So it is indicating that. So whenever the shadow is forming, suppose here it is forming, here it is forming shadow, we can say the cathode rays are not traveling in straight line. But here, have you noticed it? Cathode rays exactly forming opposite to that, means in the sense of what? The light is traveling in a what? It is traveling in the cathode rays is traveling it's in the line. straight line. What I want to remember, okay? So you can mark it if you want. This is the opaque object. Are you clear? Omanor, Omar, yes, sir. yeah, so this is the shadow, shadow of opaque object, okay, so write it, cathode rays can cast shadow of cathode rays, cathode rays can cast, Suti, understand Suti? Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything doubt, please kindly ask me. Shadow of opaque opaque object opaque object bracket you can say placed in their path placed in their path on the 
wall opposite all opposite to the cathode this shows that this shows that cathode cathode rays cathode rays travel in in a straight line straight line similar to the light rays show the interest and change your mentality also coming years you are going to 10th so that i need a lot of uh, like you know interest from you and always you have to be very dedicated and sincere in the work that is what i will expect sanjay understand sanjay yes sir yeah. next so next third property as i told you when i'm teaching the opposite uh, the wall opposite to the cathode started glowing with a faint greenish light we used to call something can you tell me what is that light called as i told you fluorescence fluorescence okay so that is the third property so the third property of cathode rays cathode rays can produce cathode rays produce fluorescence okay so what do you mean by fluorescence a greenish a faint greenish light is called as fluorescence clear so that is what so it will it will, it will fall down where guys it will be fall on opposite to the cathode that is what walls of opposite to the cathode that is what are the anode side okay so right these rays produces fluorescence these rays produces fluorescence fluorescence means what faint greenish light you remember that greenish faint greenish light when when they strike on zinc sulfide coated screen 